Hey guys, T2 out here. Welcome back to the Top Fairness Channel. In today's video, we are discussing hammocks. So the first reason why you should think about including one in your bug out or get home bag is probably the biggest thing. You get up off the ground. In our most recent get home bag challenge, you probably figured out that I slept on the ground and I absolutely hated it. It was cold out there. And so yeah, the ground completely sucked all of my heat away from me. In a hammock, you get up off the ground. Obviously a huge benefit. So for this video, we're gonna go through some hammock systems that I think you should probably look into, but also some things that I would consider to make your sleep system, your hammock system, even better for you. So a lot of people don't like sleeping in a hammock probably because they haven't used one correctly. Let me explain some things that people don't like. Number one, they feel like when they go to get inside of it, they're going to fall out. The way to prevent that is by spreading out the hammock and then getting in it. Guys, there's a reason I have to say this, and that's because somebody's tried to get in a hammock like this and they've flipped over and fell out and oh, I don't wanna sleep in a hammock no more. I have to say it because somebody's done it. So the second thing that people don't like about sleeping in the hammock is that they feel very tight. They feel very claustrophobic. The reason for that is because they have their hammock so dang tight. I put this as tight as possible just so I could lay like this, just so I record it. And this would be super uncomfortable if I had to lay here all freaking night. So the way to prevent that is instead of having your hammock as tight as you can get it, loosen it up a little bit. Now, my hammock is looser, and it's also lower to the ground. So if I do feel like I'm going to fall out, at least I'm falling out down here versus up here. The third thing that I would recommend to any new hammock hanger or any person scared of laying in a hammock is don't buy a single nest hammock. Buy a double nest hammock. So this is the Eno Sub 7, now called the Sub 6. And as you can tell, it's a very short hammock. It's not a very big hammock. I'm literally that far away from falling out. One wrong move and I will fall out. So go with some sort of double nest hammock, especially if you're scared of falling out. This thing is great for ultra lighting, for ultralight backpacking for only carrying seven ounces. But a lot of newbies and a lot of people who build bug out bags and get home bags really just don't care about the weight. And they'll take a 10 ounce or 12 ounce or 14 ounce hammock that they actually fit in versus this thing. So this right here is a Eno double nest hammock. As the name suggests, it's made for doubles. It's made for two people supposedly. It is a lot bigger as opposed to this thing for a single nest. In the Eno double nest, you do get a lot more fabric. You do get a lot more room to spread out. So would I suggest an Eno double nest for a bug out bag or get home bag? No, no, I wouldn't. Eno makes fine laying hammocks. I could lay in this, I could lay in this out here all day and be fine. But would I want to sleep in it? Absolutely not. Even being a double is still not big enough for me to lay out and stretch out asymmetrically like I'm supposed to. But what do I recommend? This right here would be one of my first recommendations. This is the Grand Trunks Double Nest Hammock. It is 11 foot in length, which is a foot to almost two foot longer than any of the Enos. So that gives you extra space to stretch out. I'm six foot tall. Laying in a nine foot hammock is very uncomfortable for me. That's a foot and a half space above me and below me. Not great. Also, it is a foot, if not two foot longer in width. That gives you plenty of room to stretch out. This is also a lot easier system than the next one that I'm gonna show you. Simply wrap it around a pole, wrap it around a tree, and you get these multitude of loops. You find one that fits on both sides, you latch it in. Very easy for a new hammock hanger to figure out. With this hammock right here, I can lay asymmetrically. 
so my feet and my body are at a diagonal. I have no bow in my legs or in my knees, so I could lay like this all night and not have that cramping problem that a lot of people get. A lot of people lay in a hammock like this, which is obviously very uncomfortable. With this extra two foot of space, I can angle myself and lay just like this and do plenty fine. Once again, this is a fantastic beginner's hammock. The suspension system is a whole lot easier to operate than the outdoor vitals, which I'll show you next. It's like 10 and a half to 11 foot long, so plenty of room for me to fit in. The outdoor vitals double nest hammock. This is a fantastic hammock. There is one drawback, and that is with the suspension system. For the other hammocks, it was easy to hang them up and just attach the points. With this hammock, it has a wooly sling system for your suspension. So you do need extra length in between your trees to make this hammock lay perfectly. We want to talk about laying asymmetrically. In this hammock, in this hammock, I can do just that. I can almost go all the way just like this. And I could sleep like that all night. Again, if I lay like this, my knees, my legs are gonna have pains. That's why you want to lay asymmetrically or diagonally in a hammock. It's not necessarily a beginner's hammock because of the suspension system. Still a good hammock, but if you don't know how to operate the suspension system, it can make for a tough time. I've been using hammocks for the last, I don't know, 10 years, and this is the third time I've set it up and the first time that I've gotten this hammock right. Look into it once you get more mature in your hammocking. As a first time hammocker, I would shy away from this one just because it is a little complicated. Sleeps great, fantastic, but the suspension system can be a little difficult. So the reason you would want a ridge line is to add the extra bounce into your hammock. Let's thing, say this thing was super tight. Again, if it's super tight, you're not gonna be very comfortable in it. So loosen up your ends a little bit and then come hang your ridge line from corner piece to corner piece. Now what you can do is you can say, you know, this just isn't loose enough. I wanna loosen it some more. And that allows for your ends to remain tight. But this, I mean, look at this. There's no tightness in my line down here. Again, stretches my hammock out and gives me a better lay. Now with this ridge line right here, this is stupid comfortable. This is more comfortable than the Grand Trunks or even with the outdoor vitals without the ridge line. So I can lay almost all the way like this because this ridge line gives that extra fabric. It gives that extra bounce to your hammock. So do I recommend hammocks? Absolutely. Do I recommend Enos? Absolutely not. I recommend Grand Trunks. I recommend Outdoor Vitals. There are some other hammocks out there. I've just not tried them. I've not tested them, so I can't tell you whether they're good or not. I do recommend picking up a ridge line. Once again, this gets you up off the ground. It gives you a better night's sleep. If properly set up, it will be the best sleep that you've ever gotten while outdoors, whether that's camping, on a bug out, or on a get home bag challenge. Adding this ridge line will turn any $20 hammock into about an $80 hammock. It will give you that extra bounce so that way you can lay asymmetrically like you would in a high dollar hammock. If you use a hammock, let me know what you use and do you use a ridge line. If you don't, how do you prevent that aches and pains in the back of your knees and your legs? Let me know in the comments. So guys, consider carrying a hammock in your bug out and your get home bag. Consider checking out Outdoor Vitals or Grand Trunks. Stay away from Eno unless you're some hipster college student. Alright guys, that's all I got for today. T2 out.